I know it's a little early, but sometimes I actually have conversations with people in the community before I actually go on air in the morning. I try not to bother too many people prior to 8 o'clock because not everybody is on my early morning schedule, and I don't want to pick up the telephone and call them at 7 o'clock and say, hey, I uh, got your message. Hey, let's talk about this, because a lot of times they're like, oh, oh, oh. you just drag them out of bed, and they're still trying to get all the cobwebs out of their brains. But there are some people I do chat with in the morning who sometimes are awake early, and I get a feel for what they're thinking and what they believe. And I was talking to a guy who is nowhere near as conservative as I was, and he says, you know, there was another blow-up last night at the city council meeting. I have been of the opinion that these things would have died down a long, long time ago, but not for people on the other side who tend to keep throwing kerosene of their own on the fire. And he said to me, he said, yep, he said, apparently a council member made some comments on Facebook, and it's one of our better council members too, one of the nicer people there, but made some comments on Facebook that just inflamed these people all the more. And so they were back. And I've, I've been very vocal on the air. I've been saying for a long time that I think that even though people in local government have no control, admittedly, and I, that's truthful, they have no control over this program. They're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. We'll admit that. I've been saying, though, doesn't mean you have to be silent about it. Now, those who are actually talking about it publicly are in favor of the program. Uh, those who obviously might not be in favor are, are just not saying anything. And you wonder again, other than the newspaper editorial board, who, who are they worried about offending? Or maybe a you know Chobani uh, executive, I suppose. But aside from that, who are they really worried about offending? Uh, you know, I bring that up. And I realize I've made a lot of noise about it too, and it has changed nothing. On the other hand, when we have people as powerful as our U.S. senators and our governor now saying they'd like to see this program at least be, uh, be be shelved for the time being until we straighten it out. And Donald Trump saying the same thing in a speech yesterday in Youngstown, Ohio. It's the people on the local level who now really have wiggle room to come out and say, you know, they're right, because that's usually how it works. It's like, oh, look, someone over there who's more powerful politically than I am is saying it, so maybe I can do that now too. Will it change things? I don't know. I had a lot of time to think about this over the weekend. Again, I've been very vocal about it. Nothing's changed. But maybe it's simply because we haven't had enough in the way of voices. New polling data today shows Americans are overwhelmingly opposed to this resettlement program at the moment. Otherwise, they might look at it a little differently. But here's some of my thoughts on it today. I just concluded a few minutes ago my warm-up on Facebook, and I was explaining to people, I said a couple of things. you got 94 to 95 million Americans who are perpetually out of work in this country. Now, you've got people saying, well, you know, a lot of them don't want to work. you got Paul LePage, the governor of Maine, who, who instituted a law, got his legislature on board with him, and it said, you can get your food stamps for a while, but eventually you're going to have to work for your food stamps. You know what happened? A lot of those people ended up taking the jobs that they said Americans would never take, and so now they're no longer even on the food stamp rolls because he said, you'll have to work to eat. And so they thought, well... I'll just go back to work on my own then and forget about it. That's that's how that essentially worked. So there's some successes in doing that around this country. Number two, we're told, well, we're going to have a labor shortage eventually. I don't see how that's going to happen when you know nearly 100 million adults can't find a job, but that's what they're telling us is we're going to have a labor shortage. If we didn't have Roe v. Wade and have 70 million babies who've been aborted over the last 43 years, we wouldn't have a labor shortage now, would we? Because... Well, let's say that out of that group, probably 40 million of them may have grown up into adulthood and had children of their own, and a lot of those children now would be entering the workforce. So you wouldn't have a need to bring people here from all over the world. And I have gotten so frustrated because I can't go to the grocery store any longer without a Spanish interpreter. So we're not, it's not just the refugees, it's that we're bringing people in from elsewhere. And you hear, well, again, we need them to work on the farms. And wink, wink, nudge, nudge, sure, they may be here Ill illegally, but you know, I mean, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I didn't notice. And they need to work on the farms because we're told, I mean, even Pete Nielsen, the representative from up in Mountain Home who is opposed to the refugee resettlement program, has said, well, yeah, I put a lot of these uh, these Latinos to work on my uh, my farm because they were more reliable than a lot of the uh, the local white kids. Well, okay, uh, let's let's take a moment and look at that. I just was on a, on, a, on a cruise 
along the Snake River over the weekend. And we were all marveling at some of these beautiful homes that are on the river between Box Canyon and Hagerman. And some of them used to be owned by people who were in the movies and television and the like, celebrities. So you can understand that they put some money, serious money, into some of these homes. But we were told that a lot of these homes are now owned by dairymen. And these are second homes. So the cheap labor they are getting from south of the border, and additionally, in some cases, farm subsidies that some people may be raking in, has allowed them to go out and buy mansions on the river. And they're telling us, no, they have to have these people working on their farms from across the border because of hardship. Um, I'm not seeing any evidence of hardship in that great big home, you know, that 3,000-square-foot home with all of the windows facing the river. Uh, un unfortunately, I think what we're dealing with here, we've got a great many Americans any longer who are more concerned about their own, own self than the future of their country and their countrymen. And I guess you could say it's sheer greed that's playing into all of this. And it's the same way with a refugee resettlement program. All of those people out there patting themselves on their back saying, oh, isn't this great? We're wonderful human beings. We're doing the compassionate thing. I wrote a post yesterday where I compared some of the beautiful sights in Idaho with some of the crappy shanty towns you've got to drive through to go see those sights. Mightily impressive for your tourists to drive through and see that. And it, it confirms, reconfirms my first impressions of Twin Falls, which were mainly the drive to work in the south end of uh, Blue Lakes Boulevard. Oh my gosh, I wanted a wretch driving through some of those neighborhoods. If you've got compassion, how come you don't have compassion for the people living in those 13th century hovels? Where, where, where are you on those issues? And it all comes back to, I still believe, money. Somebody out there is benefiting and they're using a lot of influence with the people in the political end of things in order to keep this going. And that's a frightening thought, because if that's what we're really all about any longer, then America is finished. Meanwhile, this morning, I happened to come across this on the Fox News feed. This is Jessica Gallagher from, or Gallagher from Fox News Channel. And she is saying that a lot of these people who could end up coming here are very, very ill. Natalie Thirtle, a doctor monitoring some 75,000 Syrians stuck on Syria's sealed border with Jordan, say refugees with some medical training have told her they see some 30 cases a day of jaundice, which is a symptom of hepatitis. Thirtle, who is with Doctors Without Borders, says that's an increase from one a week that Jordan was seeing before it closed the border in June. Thirtle says respiratory and gastrointestinal problems are also common. The border was closed in response to a cross-border attack by ISIS. It cut off two desert camps for medical and other aid, except for a one-off food delivery last week and non-regular water shipments. In the Mideast Bureau, Jessica Goller, her Fox News. Now, I know there's some, somebody out there going to make the claim, well, then we need to bring them here in order to take care of them. But there's a reason we have hospitals for people who are sick. That's so they don't expose themselves to the general public at large. It's 815. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 63. The other part of this is I've reiterated this many times on the air. There is no constitutional right for some foreigner to come live in this country. Constitution protects American citizens. Our government's first responsibility is to American citizens at all levels. At all levels. And again, all show an overwhelming number of Americans say it's time, if not just putting a moratorium on this program, to end it. I have a couple of clippings here today, too, as well, that I'll share with you. From the Federalist, in Germany last week, the vice president of, of a Bavaria's intelligence gathering agency announced ISIS hit squads had entered Europe with a flood of migrants. National Review's Ian Tuttle wrote in September of last year, given the sheer magnitude of the migration, it's a virtual certainty that terrorist organizations are taking advantage of the crisis. And this writer at The Federalist says, what has happened with Europe's migrant crisis is evidence of an ongoing pathology in the West, especially with regard to Islam. Anything perceived as offensive or xenophobic is off limits for discussion. Meanwhile, the Daily Caller has this. George Soros has been funding the promotion of migrant and refugee resettlement in order to break down the good old USA. Daily Caller says a section of the review titled, and this was the title they gave it, Our Work. It's a bit like the mafia with Our Thing. 
our thing. Our work, it's called under Soros' direction, describes how America's least transparent think tank has worked with leaders in the field to shape migration policymaking and influence regional and global processes affecting the way migration is governed and enforced. Pat Buchanan's latest column in my email inbox this morning. Concerning, he writes, the demographic decline and displacement of Western man by peoples of other creeds, cultures, countries, continents, and civilizations. There is an ideological clash within the West. Some among our elites are rhapsodic at the change, worshiping at the altars of diversity and equality. They see acquiescing in the invasion of their own countries as a mark of moral superiority. And he says, it is hard, though, to see how this crisis resolves itself peacefully. And then I have this from the, uh, the resurgent. It says, the YOLO stage of the Obama presidency, Gitmo prison break edition. And we are starting to see people being released from the prison at Guantanamo Bay, the terrorists who are fighting us on the battlefield. Dr. Andrew, or rather, uh, I guess it's, he might be a doctor, but the, the lawyer, Andrew Napolitano, and former judge, was saying on a TV program I saw last week, the problem with this, since people in Congress never actually declared war, you can't hold these people any longer. All it would take would be for some people right now in the House and Senate to show some guts and go ahead and do that while you still have a Republican majority, and then you could block Obama from turning these people loose back onto the battlefields of the world. Meanwhile, of course, he's emptying the jails out so that we can replenish the drug runners who will go back and forth between Mexico and the United States. There's a story about that today as well. And the Washington Examiner, details and proof of what's going on and how this will all shape up. And we've got an American public that is being told, you know what? If you just vote for Hillary, you'll get more of all of this. And I guess on the local level, if you keep voting for the same stiffs, you'll get more of it here too. If we get the government we deserve, as is often said, then I guess America is truly finished. And number two, I really believe that if we could just put up some candidates, even on the local level, who could articulate all of this, we could start to turn things around. The problem is, every time someone comes along and says, I'm going to challenge, they come from the loopiest part of town, and they either seem loopy or violent or both, and it scares people away who would normally be on our side. Isn't there anyone out there with the brains and ability to do this and to finally take up the cause of the majority? 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Some of my guests today, actually, very guest heavy show. Steve Millington between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. And then Prosecutor Grant Loeb's between 9 and 10 o'clock. All of that's on the way on News Radio 1310 KLIX, as well as News Radio 1310.com. And remember, at our website, you can hear us anywhere all over the world by just clicking on the Listen Live function. I did mention uh, Steve Millington will be in studio with us in a few minutes, and then Grant Loeb's in the next hour. Question or comments for the uh, for our guest today, of course, 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. Are you looking to get well? I mean, are you looking to get better? Maybe you just feel blah all the time. And, of course, you could meet a lot of people who'd like to fill you with, I guess, all sorts of tranquilizers and uppers and tell you that this will be good for you, but... That only enriches the pharmaceutical industry and may in the long run may not really be what you need. We've been recommending seeing Dr. Eric F. Jones, who practices a holistic approach, and that's really what you need is an overall look to wellness. He's been doing this now since 1993. I want to mention as well he has master's and doctoral degrees in marriage and family therapy. Dr. Eric F. Jones uses methods of alternative healing, such as naturopathy, medicinal herbs, nutrition, sound waves, intellectual cognitive self-regulation, and naprathy to help remedy and manage mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual challenges. He's currently accepting new patients, and he has evening and Saturday appointments available. Telephone number 731-7178, and of course you can find him on Facebook as well at Eric F. Jones, Ph.D., Mental Health and Wellness Therapist, and that's Eric with a C. I just looked up at my TV monitor, and they showed a picture of a guy leaving a parking garage and an 18-wheeler ran over his car. The front of the 18-wheeler actually missed it, but apparently somehow the, the, the tractor 
got by, but the trailer didn't, and it looks like it crushed the front of his vehicle. I had a, almost a similar experience this morning. I was driving into work in the wee hours, and when you come down Washington Street and you're heading south, the road narrows there in that area of Glanbia, so it goes from two lanes to one. And I'm driving along, and I saw a car coming from the other direction, and I saw a guy sitting in the parking lot at the plant, but he was looking to make apparently a right turn, but he actually paused for the guy coming the other way, which wasn't going to be a problem for him, and then he pulled right out in front of me. I had my lights on. It's it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and I had to, I had to move quickly over into the turning lane and, and then managed to finally get back in front of him, but it was almost as if there was no recognition that there was another vehicle there. Maybe he was pulling a double. 826, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It is 64 right now. And if you'd like to reach our program today, you have a question or comment for some of the subjects we're talking about. Maybe the opening one we just threw out here a few minutes ago. That telephone number is 736 0300. 736 0300. This is a country built on the notion of representative government. So, if that's the if that's the, uh, the what we're told, then why don't we get it? Because we all know deep down in our hearts, and maybe you know it obviously, that it really has become government of the donor class, and apparently not just at the national level, but it's trickling down into the local level as well. I can't find any other explanation as why so many people out there are completely tone deaf when it comes to the issues that seem to be most important to the public. And I don't care what the liberals tell you in the newspapers. Oh, we're not that kind of people. Oh, we are so much better around here. We can do better. We need to do this because it's the right thing to do. Baloney. Baloney. You walk into any diner in town, walk over to a table and ask the people there how they feel. Walk into any tavern in town, you ask the people how they feel. Even among those people who are coming out of houses of worship, you walk up to them in the parking lots afterwards and talk to them. You're going to get an earful. And the liberal media in this community is not a reflection of how people feel. Trust me. As I say, I've been doing a lot of traveling, not just around the uh, the Magic Valley, but all over the state of Idaho. I've devoted my summer to that. Just about every weekend, uh, maybe but one, I've gotten in the car and I've just pointed it in the direction of some, some small town and gone in and sat down and listened to the people. We have a caller with us. You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Yes, Bill. <laughs> you know, again, I'm repeating myself, but it bears repeating. I do business all across this southern Idaho area with business owners, some of the biggest business owners in this valley. And I'm going to tell you, I'm always talking politics, and they know that that's what I do because they know me. I, I'm a political man because it seems like we have to do something. And I ask them about refugees in there. They're, they're, they're so opposed to it, you can't believe it. But not everybody is, you know, like me, where I'm always on their air blabbing. You know, these these people are out here doing their job, paying their bills, meeting payroll, taking care of their employees, and doing the right thing, and, and we should respect them. They drive the economy of southern Idaho, and, and here in the Times News, acts like it doesn't matter. Maybe some of the city council acts like it doesn't matter. Maybe some of the trustees at CSI act like it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. Well, I thank you for the call. You've got folks among liberals in this community who would try to tell you that everybody else is simply a liberal. If they're not, then there's something wrong with them. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you read through liberal media and you hear liberal media talk and the liberals talk, they'll try to tell you that just about everybody out there is a transgendered homosexual. Well, that's not true. They'll try to tell you that everybody out there is welcoming of all of the illegal aliens who are overrunning us. That's not true. I mean, th this is so obvious. How can they continue to peddle all of these big lies? This is one of the most conservative places and patriotic places in all of America. How, how is that being ignored? And how is the will of the people being so wholeheartedly ignored? We've got a break coming up. It's 8.30. Again, you represent the people. You're not their betters. You're not our overlords.